hopefully will be out soon. So the Togodo tutorial series, if you do not know about it already, I will of course link it down below. And right now it has covered all aspects of 2D development. On top of that, I've done a couple of other series that are very interesting to this particular topic, specifically Godot 2.79, sorry, Blender 2.79 to Godot and Blender 2.8 to Godot. But what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna do an introduction to 3D in the Godot game. It's we're not actually gonna do any development. We're gonna introduce how you work with 3D when dealing with Godot game engine. So without further ado, let us jump in. So as you see here, I am just creating a new project. It is in uh, 3.2. Uh, the key thing to be aware of here is you now have the option between OpenGL ES3 and 2. And the biggest thing here is ES3 supports slightly less devices, uh, but has more high quality visuals. So if you're not on a constrained or older hardware, you probably want to go with three. And this is actually something you can change after the fact, as we will see in a second. So I'm gonna just go ahead and create my project and then we will get to it. So there you go project is created. Uh, you can see up here the toggle. So if you want to switch back to ES2, you can do so right here. It does, however, require a restart. So until this point, we've dealt entirely with 2D only. So what we're going to do in this case is actually create a 3D scene. Now, they're the exact same format. The only big difference is what the root node is. In this particular case, it's spatial. And so spatial is the root node in a 3D scene, and everything is basically derived from spatial, as we will see, well, right now, actually. So what we're going to do is create uh, just a simple cube in our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new child node. And the tree that you're interested in here, oops, I did not actually mean to create a spatial. Let's get rid of that and try that again. All right, so I'm gonna come here, create a new node, and this time I'm gonna expand it. And then what you're interested here, and there's, these are all of the various different 3D objects that you can use in Godot, but the one we're most interested in here is the visual instance tree. And you'll see here, you've got geometry interests, light maps, lights, GI probes, and so on. What we wanna do is create a geometry instance, and we're gonna create a mesh instance. Now, if you actually import a 3D object, like I showed you in those two Blender videos, it will automatically create the appropriate tree for you. All right, so now that we've got our mesh instance right here, we're gonna come over here into the inspector and you see here we have mesh. So we could do this, we could load it, we could create it from an array of points, we can create various different kinds or we could load a mesh in. What I'm gonna do in this case is just create a new cube mesh and we've got, we can edit the details of it right here. So we want to come in here, go to edit, we can change the properties, the number of subdivisions and so on, but we're gonna keep it as it is because now we have a 3D object in our world, we should be pretty happy. Um, on top of that, we could go ahead and assign a material to this guy. So we've got a zero material slot. We're gonna go down here into the material, say new, and you got a shader material and a spatial material. I'm actually gonna cover um, spatial and shader materials in the next video. So I'm not gonna go into a lot more detail. I'm just gonna show you here is how you would go ahead and create and edit a material. So here, for example, if we wanted to come in and color it, so let's go into the Albedo channel, check the color, and there you go. So see, we now have a red cube in the scene. Once again, I'm going to cover materials and shaders in an upcoming video. So that's the extent of what we are going to cover here now. So back to the world of 3D in Godot, what you're gonna probably wanna know is how to navigate around in the world. First off, you're going to want to be in the 3D view. So you see here, you've got 2D, 3D, script, and so on. You can actually get to 3D by pressing the F2 key. So here I pressed F1 to go to 2D, F2 gets me into 3D, F3 gets me into script, F2 gets me back into 3D, for example. So very handy way to jump around between modes. Uh, so once you are actually here, if you want to navigate around the world, your middle mouse button orbits around the selected object. As you can see, we are spinning around the cube. The uh, right mouse button orbits around your viewport, like you can see right here. Um, and then shift and the middle mouse button pans your view, like so. Now what you're gonna wanna do a lot of times, if you're gonna wanna fly around your world, just hold down the right mouse button and then you can use the WASD keys just like you're in a first person shooter. So if you're already familiar with WASD key controls, hold down the right mouse button and use those keys to move around in the scene. On top of that, you can use Q and E with the right mouse button to go up and down. Now another very convenient thing you're gonna wanna do quite often is move things around. And those are using the QWERT controls. It's a very industry standard thing. So Q is often select, W is, and you're seeing them switch up here. So select mode, and then I press W, E, R. So if you look at your keyboard, you'll notice that those are all in order. They match the order of these guys on the icon. So within select mode, I can left click select, and we've got this guy, and it's got all of the operators available with the little widgets here. So I can press the W key, and watch this guy. We're gonna switch into move mode, and you're gonna see the widget change as it rolls. So then I can grab this guy and move it individually along the axis. So as we keep going, so we can switch into rotate, or I'm gonna press the E key to do that, and you'll see you can rotate along individual axes using uh, these uh, widgets as well. Um, 
or you can do more of a generalized rotate as well. And then we've got scale finally. So you can scale along a single axis or multiple axes like so. And again, there are widget controls for handling it. So that is how you move things around. So again, Q to select and do uh, like a universal move of move, scale and rotate all in one widget. Uh, w is just move, E is rotate, and R, kind of confusingly, is scale. Just keep in mind, these go in the same order as the QWERTY QWERTY keys are across your selection thing. Now, another thing you're going to want to know about is O or an F. So if you press the F key, it will focus on and frame. That's what the F stands for is frame the selected object. So if I'm sitting here and I'm looking off this way, but I've still got that guy selected, I press F and boom, we focus in on our select. So I move away, F, we focus back in on it. We can also press O and we'll focus on the origin. So we're, we're actually looking at the zero, zero coordinate. Of it. So there is zero, zero, let me move away. I'll hit O and you see it snaps back so that we are looking at the origin at that point. All right, so that's the basics of navigation. Another thing you'll notice here is if you go up here to perspective, you've got the option here of switching between various different views. So this is actually a menu and you can switch between right view, top view and so on. Notice also at the side, it says key press seven. Um, this is if you have a full keyboard, like a 101 key keyboard, you can use the seven key, the one key and the three key to quickly shift between the different perspectives. And I think Oh, no, I'm wrong on that. Okay, so one, three, and seven, we'll switch between the various different modes. And you see, if you press Alt in those numbers, it will do the opposite. So seven is top, Alt and seven is the bottom. Now that requires a full uh, number pad to be on your, your machine, however. You can also switch between um, perspective and orthogonal. Orthogonal, basically there is no drop off as you get further away from the camera, often used in 2D. Perspective, as the camera gets farther away or as things get farther away, they get smaller. For example, you can see on the grid here, large line, smaller, 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 smaller as they fall off onto the horizon. Uh, so you got various different options down here that you can control. You can switch into wireframe mode, for example. Uh, there's overdraw, not actually sure what you would use that for most of the time. Unshaded and so on, let's switch that back to normal. You can turn things on and off and so on. You also see the hotkeys for the commands I talked about earlier are available right there. So let's go back to normal mode here. Another thing you can do is switch up here. You can switch and split into a multiple viewport setting. So if you wanted to have different, so if you wanted to lock one to the right view and you wanted to lock this one to the rear view, for example, you can easily do so. Or you can just switch back to, we'll go back here to the view again, and we can switch back to a single viewport like so. You can also turn off the grid and everything else, but that is the basics of navigating around your scene. Now, one of the things you're going to find is you actually go ahead and save your scene. So go ahead and save this guy and call it, sure, I'll call it spatial. Uh, we go to run it. It's going to pick my, yep, yeah, we'll select our scene. We'll select spatial. And that's not what we want. So what's going on here? Well, the problem in the world here is you need a camera. So come back here to the root of your guy here, create the plus under spatial, search down and you will eventually find a camera. But what I'm going to do is instead search. So what you want to do is make sure however you're using the camera under spatial, the one under canvas item is dedicated for 2D only. So you've also got a VR camera here, clip camera, interpolated camera. So if you're doing uh, moves or frames over time and you want to interpolate the movement, but we don't need that. We just need a camera. So we added our camera in the scene and you can actually click right here and you can actually preview what your camera sees. So if we zoom back in here, I turn that guy on and let's do a split view here. So we've got two viewports going on. So you see here, let's go to the top view. Let's grab our camera, move into the W mode, and you will see as we move it around, it is adjusted in the scene. Now, the final thing we are going to show in this particular video is the environment. You will notice over here, now that we have a camera, the camera has a setting for environment. You can, uh, there will actually be one a default environment right here, uh, but we can go ahead and create a new one. And there's a lot, this is basically, you can think of as your 3D settings. You notice our world just went dark there. Well, that's because we created a new environment. Let's go into it and you will see here are all the various different settings. And I'm not gonna go into them in any detail right now. That's just way beyond what we wanna go to. But for example, if you wanna set uh, the background color to a sky, you can do so right here. We wanna add some light to our node, an ambient light. Let's create a white ambient light. So you see things are actually getting lit up. You can create the amount that it's gonna go by. Um, and without adding that, we'd had no other results. Now, of course, we could come back here. And this is something I'm going to do another video about at some point in time. But you've also got under spatial, you've got a number of different lights, like directional light, omni light, and spotlight. So we'll go ahead and create an omni light. That's just basically think of a light that goes off in all directions. So there it is in our scene. Uh, we can move it around 
and you'll see the shadowing is affecting on that guy. But of course, since I turned on the ambient light in our environment, so let's go back to our camera, right, right here, and go back to the environment. Now that we have that light in the scene, I could go ahead and turn the energy from our ambient light down, and then you're just going to see the effect of that light in the world makes the lighting much more profound. So that's what you see your environment is useful for. It's for setting uh, all the global settings and the rendering settings in your world. So you can see how you can create your sky. Uh, we could create a new procedural sky. And there, boom, we now have a sky in our world. On top of that, we've got ambient lighting going on. If we wanted to add some fog to the world, we could go ahead and enable some fog. And you've got some controls over how your fog is distributed, uh, this, the color of it, the strength of it, and so on. Uh, so let's make this fog like lime green fog in our world if we want. We're good to go. Um, we can add some glowing. And then you come in here, you can do things like uh, SS reflection, subsurface. Oh, I always get that one wrong on my acronym. Uh, depth of field far, depth of field near. You can turn those on and off. Those are actually configured directly in the camera, I believe. So let's go back to the camera object for a second and we'll look at some of the other options here. So we've got, you can change the perspective of the camera. So you can have Farstrom, you see where you define it yourself, orthogonal, or perspective projection. There is your field of view. So this is, you can see the results of it there. Uh, you, again, as I mentioned, the near and far, this is how close to the camera and how far from the camera it will render. So you see, if we get too close, it's actually not gonna view. You can think of kind of these as the near and far range that the camera will see. And that is kind of all we're going to cover today. There's quite a bit packed in there. Uh, we've shown you how to navigate around the world, how to create an instance 3D objects in the scene. Again, if you're working with a 3D object, like watch one of those videos I did about um, importing Blender objects. They just come in as entities you bring down here, you drop them in, and they're a hierarchy inherited from Spatial itself. Now, a lot of times they will have their own lights, they'll have animations, they will have mesh instances, and so on. But it's ultimately the same thing with the same process. And again, we kind of really briefly touched on applying a material to an object. Uh, we will get into that in more detail later on. There's other things here that we didn't really cover, like you can do levels of detail so that as you get closer and farther to things, it, it swaps out the version. So you use higher or lower polygons. But I think that is all I want to cover today. So we covered the basics of navigating around 3D, using the viewport, switching to 3D mode, um, creating a camera, creating an environment for that camera, creating lights in the scene. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good combination of things to cover for one video. If there's something that I didn't cover in detail that isn't going to get its own video that you have questions about, do let me know in the comments down below, and I will do my best to cover that. But keep in mind, next up, we are going to look quickly at shaders and materials, and we're going to move on from there. So first off, sorry for the hiatus in the... Um, in the tutorial series, we are picking things back up in the 3D world. Let me know what you want to cover specifically in 3D. And now a lot of the functionality between 2D and 3D is quite similar in process. So the 3D uh, categories are probably gonna be a little bit shorter. Uh, but again, let me know what you wanna cover. I intend to cover everything ultimately in this series, including this introduction to 3D in Godot. So if you have any questions, let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.